What is Terraria's Masochist mode? Well, do you know Terraria's Eternity mode? Take that, and then add steroids to it, and you get Masochist mode. Masochist mode is like an upgraded, even harder version of Eternity mode, developed by the same devs. Every boss is faster than in Eternity mode, and even gains some new attacks and mechanics. I wanna hit 20,000 subs, so subscribing would be, you know, pretty cool. I don't wanna keep stalling, so let's begin. So I spawned in, broke the statue, and got the mutant's gift, which I happily used to turn on maskist mode, not knowing the horrors that I would face in this literal hell. Once I turned on maskist mode, the deviant spawned, which is an NPC that sells summons for rare enemies you encounter. I talked to the deviant and she gave me a bunch of stuff. She gave me life crystals, mana crystals, magic storage items to store my stuff in, a grappling hook, the Eurus socks, which is like a budget Hermes boots, and a puff in a bottle, which is like a worse version of the clown in a bottle. So she basically gave me a lot of starter stuff, which is really cool. After making some houses, I used the half instavator I got from the Deviant, which creates a elevator halfway through the underground. Then I collected some juicy ores and life crystals. After exploring some skylands for a star fury, I went exploring the underground jungle. It's already pretty bad in normal terraria, but it is an absolute hellhole in maskist mode. I found some life crystals and ores, but eventually I died. Because, well, it's the underground jungle, what else can you expect? But then I already felt an evil presence watching me, and the eye spawned. Since I barely had collected any loot, I got destroyed. So I kept exploring the underground for more loot and more accessories and life crystals, and eventually I maxed out everything. So I went to the corruption and broke two orbs so the goblin army could spawn. Once they spawned, after a lot of uncalled deaths, I beat it. Then the Abomination NPC spawned after I beat the Goblin army. The Abomination sells event summons and has the ability to cancel out events. So for example, if a Goblin army comes and you don't want that, just use this NPC to cancel it. And bro, this man, this guy, is a savior. You have no idea how much Goblin armies, Blood Moons, and Pirate invasions this man saved me from later in the game. The Squirrel NPC also spawned, and it sells duplicates of things that you have already made. And it sells NPCs. <laughs> Somehow. Then I made the squirrel coat of arms by catching the squirrel NPC and using it in my recipe. Yep, I know, we're cooking the squirrel now. And then I used that to summon the Trojan squirrel. And this boss is way worse on maskus mode. So after a few totally planned deaths, I summoned it one more time. The Trojan squirrel is a gigantic robotic squirrel that has a lot of unique attacks like shooting grappling hooks at the player, shooting acorns, snowballs, and it even tries to run over the player. This is our first boss in Maskist mode defeated, and if you thought this was hard, trust me you have no idea what's coming in the future. Then I went back to the corruption and used the demon altar to make the slime crown, and with that I summoned the king slime. And in Maskist mode, when you summon a boss for the first time, you're able to infinitely use the summon item until you actually beat it. So I was able to use the slime crown however times I want until I actually beat the king slime. I also died a lot, of course. I mean, why wouldn't I die to the boss? I hate this stupid game. So I tried again. The king slime still tries to bounce and hit the player, but it also rains these spikes from thin air and shoots out more slime balls. I got an accessory called the slimy shield, which made gel rain down on enemies every time I jumped. Though it was kind of bad, every vanilla boss has a special custom accessory like this. Then I tried my first fight with the eye. After making a bigger arena and doing a few more attempts, I made the Ebonwood enchantment. Crafted from a bunch of Ebonwood materials like the armor set, the sword, and the fruit that drops from Ebonwood trees. I also had to move the painter into the corruption to get the painting needed to craft it. 
If you're wondering what enchantments are, they are exclusive Mascus mode accessories that give certain buffs depending on what enchantment you're using. And the Ebon Wood enchantment gives a big Shadow Flame aura, which damages enemies that go near it, and if a projectile does less than 10 damage to you, the Shadow Flame aura will cancel it out. And you'll see why this enchantment was insane for the eye. Then I found the Goblin Tinkerer, farmed Trojan Squirrels for money, and reforged my items. After grinding in the jungle for a blade of grass, I made the Tungsten enchantment, which makes all swords comically large. After many more attempts, I made the Lead enchantment, which reduced damage from damage over time debuffs, and damage over time debuffs was what was killing me in this fight. And after many more tries, I finally beat this stupid boss. The Shadow Flame Aura saved me by cancelling out the projectiles that this boss shot. Because even though it doesn't do much damage, the projectiles gave me a Shadow Flame debuff that does a hell of a lot of damage to me. The comically large Blade of Grass also really helps with the servants. The first phase of this boss is easy, but once the second phase kicks in, it gets really annoying because of the minions and the very fast dashing. And it dashes way faster than in Eternity mode. If this was just the eye, I'm wondering how hard the other bosses are gonna be. Not gonna lie, this boss felt harder than the mutant on attorney mode. After setting a pylon system for convenience, I crafted the worm food. Then I tried a few attempts at the masochist eater of worlds, and I died to it. But if I got a few more mobility accessories, I knew I could beat it. So I explored more sky islands and got some fledgling wings. After farming king slimes for money, I tried a few more attempts at the eater. And guess what? I beat it. This boss isn't nearly as bad as the Eye of Cthulhu, so I'm thankful about that. The Maskist Eater of Worlds shoot out these vile spit projectiles and these cursed flame orbs that deal a ton of damage to the player. It can also do this really cool synchronized dash with its other segments to try and hit the player. But then when I beat it, I realized that there was one more thing this boss had to offer. Because for some reason, under my area there was a bunch of corruption now. So this boss apparently spreads corruption. Good thing I disabled corruption spread using a mod, because that's annoying and I don't want it. Then a meteorite landed, so I mined it up and created the star cannon. Then I crafted a city buster using 50 dynamite and used it in the underground jungle. And if you're wondering what it does, it explodes a big area like this, so I could use it for my arena. Then I summoned the queen bee and tried to go at it, and I got destroyed. So then I farmed a bunch of king slimes, a lot, for money. Then I bought a bunch of 30 stack potions. 30 stack potions are basically, if you buy 30 of one potion, you get that buff forever. So if I have 30 iron skin potions in my inventory, I get the iron skin buff permanently. Because I had so much money, I was able to buy a lot of buffs. It's a cool feature Fargo's adds. Then I went down to the underworld. Usually in masochist mode, going into the underworld gives you an on fire debuff. But using the obsidian skin potion negates that. And I was able to safely mine enough hellstone to craft a molten fury. Then I fought the queen bee, and it was going very well. In fact, my Ebonwood enchantment was blocking all the projectiles because it would have done less than 10 damage to me. But later into the fight, I choked. So then I grinded hornets in the underground jungle for the bazaar, which negates poisoning debuffs. Since the queen bee fight has a lot of poisoning, I thought it would be very useful. While I was doing that though, I killed a nymph and it dropped the nymph's perfume. Trust me, this accessory will be very important later. I kept trying and trying, and although at one point I got really close, I just couldn't beat this thing, so I skipped it. So instead, I went to the dungeon and summoned Skeletron and died on purpose, because after I did that, a suspicious looking skull spawned into my inventory, the summoning item for Skeletron in Fargo's soul mod. 
So I used that on my arena next to my base to summon it. And I beat it first try. Let's go. Skeltron is able to do a lot of things in Maskist mode. It's able to spawn these wall of Skeltron heads while shooting bone projectiles. It's also able to regrow its arms. And lastly, it has a new phase when it gets low. It gets a dungeon guardian phase, where once it's at around 50 HP, it gains 9999 defense and it one shots you when you get hit by it. So all attacks do only one damage to it. So fast firing weapons is amazing for this phase, like the mini shark. I managed to actually get the Bone Zone first try, the unique weapon that Skeltron can drop, and it uses bones for ammo, and I couldn't use it since I had no bones. So I made a trip to the dungeon and got the Cobalt Shield and Shadow Key, as well as some bones to test the weapon out. And it's actually really overpowered. I also found out that I could buy bones from one of the quality of life NPCs, so that makes things easier. Then using the Bone Zone, I tried to kill the Deviant. The Deviant is an exclusive Maskist mode boss that you fight. In Eternity mode, it was pretty easy. But in masochist mode, I couldn't even beat it. So I went to the underworld and using a shadow key, I unlocked shadow chest until I got the dark lance. And then I used the tungsten enchantment again. And that made this weapon overpowered. Since with it, I got insane range. So after making some molten armor, I managed to kill the queen bee. The queen bee has a good amount of differences in masochist mode. As it gets slower, it summons these bees called royal subjects which try to hit the player just by dashing. And queen bee gains an insane amount of damage reduction whenever a royal subject subject is alive and also it has death beams now After setting up more pylons, I crafted the Battle Cry. It's a Fargo's item that allows me to make the spawn rates higher by 10 times or lower by 10 times, so it's perfect for grinding. Then I fished in honey in the underground jungle for a honey fin. Once I got that, I used it to craft the bee enchantment. Basically, when you hit an enemy with either a melee weapon or a piercing weapon, you have a chance to spawn bees that skill with your weapon damage. After farming in the underworld for a guide voodoo doll, I summoned the wall of flesh. The wall of flesh is able to shoot these blue laser beams at the player, and it alternates between crimson eye core and corruption cursed flame attacks. In the eye core attack, you have to go far. In the cursed flame attack, you have to get close. Without the star cannon and and B enchantments, this fight would have been way harder. Luckily though, I melted it, and I beat it. I got a bunch of drops from this fight. I got the demon heart, so I used that. I also got a pylon cleaner which cleans every single pylon I place from evil biomes. I also got angel wings to give me a head start with wings, and I also got an altar exterminator which destroyed every single altar, spawning in a bunch of hard mode ores into the world. Don't worry, there are craftable altars, so if I ever need to craft something from an altar I can do that. I also got an adamantite forge, mithril anvil, and adamantite pickaxe to give me a head start with the hard mode ores. And lastly, I got the ranger emblem, so that's cool. Then I grinded for a lot of stuff, but I forgot to record. It was mainly just the fairy wings and onyx blaster. I then made the Omni Station, basically a buff station that combines things like campfires, heart lanterns, bass statues, honey, and way more. 
then I farmed Corrupt Mimics for the Dart Rifle, and I managed to switch it to the Dart Pistol. You can do that in Maskist mode. And I managed to kill the Deviant. Who really cares that I killed it in hard mode? This boss was stupid anyways. I got Deviating Energy, a crafting material dropped by the Deviant, and it's used to make a lot of stuff. After farming Hallowed Mimics for the Stormbow and making Frost Armor, I fought the Destroyer, and I got shredded. So instead, I went fishing for an obsidian swordfish. Once I got it, I used the tungsten enchantment to make it viable, so it's really big. I also made two new enchantments, the wizard enchantment and the obsidian enchantment. The wizard enchantment boosted every other enchantment that I had on me, so if I had a tungsten enchantment, it would make my weapon even bigger, and the obsidian enchantment makes it so that if I'm in lava, my attacks cause fire explosions. But I don't need to be in lava for this to work because of my wizard enchantment boosting it. Then I kept trying to kill the destroyer, and I kept failing. So instead I decided to do something else, kill the queen slime. Apparently, the crystal assassin enchantment is a very good dash. So I tried to fight her, and on my first attempt, I actually got really close. So I kept trying and trying, and eventually I finally beat it. This boss is really annoying. The queen slime is basically just projectile spam. Just like the Queen Bee, it can also summon these gelatin subjects, and the Queen Bee gains damage reduction until you kill the gelatin subjects. After killing it, I realized that this boss spreads the halo, so that's bad. I also bought another Queen Slime treasure bag to get all the Crystal Assassin armor, and I used it to make the Crystal Assassin enchantment, and I replaced my Shield of Cthulhu with it, since the dash is way better. Then I kept trying my luck against the big metal worm, and after 43 attempts of literal pain, I got it. The Destroyer has some new attacks. It's able to sometimes spin around you while shooting these projectiles, and it's very hard to dodge. It also can sometimes do this very big laser attack, which can also be hard to dodge. Then I spent a hell of a lot of time trying to grind for an accessory called the Bionomic Cluster. The Bionomic Cluster has, well, you can read all that, but basically, it combines every single accessory dropped from certain rare enemies, like Tim's Concoction from Tim, the Concentrated Rainbow Matter from the Rainbow Slime, and more. I then did the event everyone forgets about. That's right, the Old One's Army. Usually this event has no use, but in this mod, it actually gives a lot of good loot, and I killed the Ogre for the Phantom Phoenix. So I used that to try to kill the twins, but I kept dying. So I tried to make the ninja enchantment, which boosts armor penetration and greatly boosts projectile speed, but it lowers my damage to compensate. But with the phantom phoenix, this was amazing. So after reforging all my items, I beat the twins. This boss honestly felt way too unbalanced. Everything I died to is cheap shots to be fair, but it's maskus mode. Yeah, it's not supposed to be fair at all. Then I fought the last mech, 
Skeletron Prime, and honestly screw this boss. It had 8 arms and it's incredibly hard to dodge any of its arms. And the movements are just stupid. Also thankfully I didn't forget about the dungeon guardian phase this boss has, just like Skeletron. So the next boss is Plantera, right? Well, not exactly. There's this boss called Life Light, which you're supposed to fight right before Plantera. Well, it's not Life Light anymore. Now it's called Life Light. The name isn't too different, but it got a massive rework ever since I played Eternity Mode. So I summoned it and I got absolutely demolished. Then I decided to make this Sharpshooter's Essence. It's an accessory that combines a lot of ranged weapons, and it heavily boosts my range damage. Since I already had a lot of the weapons, it wasn't too hard to make. So then I instead tried to fight Plantera, and that didn't go too well. So I made some upgrades. I farmed the Solar Eclipse to get the broken Batwing and used that to make the Batwings. I also mined Chlorophyte in the Underground Jungle to get Chlorophyte Armor and the Chlorophyte Enchantment. The Chlorophyte Enchantment allows me to dash and summons these Leaf Crystals around me that hit the enemy. And I also made the Aeolus Boots, an upgrade to the Terra Spark Boots. After throwing more attempts at Plantera, I killed the Ogre mini boss a few times by buying the summon item from the Abomination and grinding them until I got enough Defender Medals to buy the Monk Armor Set from the Tavern Keep. And here's the thing, this armor set made me deal way more damage. In fact, it made me deal so much damage that I was able to kill Plantera the first try after I started using it. In Maskist mode, Plantera is able to shoot these leaf crystals at you. It also placed these mines that explode more leaves dealing damage to the player. In phase 2, it's able to do this attack that's very similar to Infernum Plantera, where it shoots tentacles everywhere except at certain spots of the arena. Plantera actually drops life roots and chlorophyte in Mascus mode, so that's nice. Now that the Mothron is able to spawn in the Solar Eclipse because Plantera was killed, I grinded the Solar Eclipse. And once I killed Mothron and got the Broken Hero Sword, I crafted the Terra Blade. I love this weapon with the Tungsten Enchantment. So then I fog Golem, also now known as Sans. Also known as literal hell, because I didn't know what was happening in this fight, I hated it. So I made some changes to my setup. I used the Hala helmet instead of the monk mask. I also made the mithril enchantment. It basically makes it so that your attack speed is temporarily increased by a lot after not attacking for a while. The attack speed increase ends after 3 seconds and it takes 5 seconds of not attacking to recharge. I also made the dubious circuitry, which gives me the ability to inflict myself with cursed inferno, which makes me lose 1 health barrier a second and removing all my life regen, but it gives me an insane damage boost. And you can turn it off and on whenever you want. And lastly, I made the Barbarian's Essence. It's like a melee version of the Sharpshooter's Essence, requiring a lot of melee weapons to craft and giving a very high melee damage boost. After trying again, I decided to actuate some blocks above the temple to give me more room. It gave me more space, but I still died. So I decided to check the weapon kill times for Mascus mode, and the Blizzard Staff came out on top. After grinding golden 
Golden Slimes for money, I tried to do the Frost Moon, but I didn't have any luck since I was pre Golem and the Frost Moon was very powerful. After dying even more times, I grinded banners in the Corruption Biome because if you get 10 banners from Corruption enemies, you can craft the Corruption Key. So I did just that. And since I didn't want to have to look for the Corruption Chest, I was able to combine the Corruption Key with Ectoplasm to make the Scourge of the Corruptor. Since you could do that in Mascus mode, and my god, this weapon saved me. It did less damage than the Terra Blade, but it had actual range, so I was at way less risk of getting hit. And after a bunch of tries, I beat Sans. I won't even say anything because I didn't know what was happening. Oh my god, this boss made me want to gouge my eyes out. So then I made two crafting stations, the elemental assembler and the multitask center. Both of them are crafting stations that are basically combinations of a bunch of stations. I then decided to do the old one's army. Normally nobody would want to do it, but in maskus mode, Betsy can actually drop a lot of good loot, and I tried a bit, and I didn't even get close. So I decided to pull out my trick to beat this event, hoiks. And after using them, I managed to get to wave 7 and I died to Betsy. Now I'm not actually mad, because once you get to wave 7, Maskus mode makes it so that you automatically get an item called the Dragon's Egg. So even though I lost, I can now summon Betsy using the Dragon Egg without doing the Old One's army, so that's pretty nice. But when I tried to fight Betsy, yeah, Maskus mode makes it so that not only random text is shown on screen, but also random sounds start playing that make my eardrums fossilize. I looked at the Fargo's wiki, and that's an intended feature for Maskus Betsy. So to try and kill Betsy, I plan on doing the Martian Madness. But this random Stardust enemy somehow spawns to ruin my hopes. Why are lunar enemies spawning? I managed to finally get a Martian probe, but I accidentally killed when I was trying to kill Wyverns. I try again and get killed by Crawltipede. Can this get any worse? But then I realized that I can just start the Martian Madness using an item bought by the Abomination NPC. So I use it. And I managed to kill one of the many Martian saucers that spawned. So the Abomination sold an item to spawn the Martian saucer after I killed it. So I didn't need to do the Martian Madness anymore. Oh my god, I love these NPCs. After killing a few saucers and dying to some, I got a trophy. So I used it to craft the laser machine gun. I saw that the laser machine gun was the weapon that had the least kill time for Betsy. So I used it. So I made a full switch to the mage class, using the apprentice essence, the mage version of the barbarian and sharpshooter essence, as well as using spectre armor. And I'm not gonna lie, I absolutely shredded Betsy with this setup. Betsy had a lot of changes, causing dark mages to spawn, as well as absolutely ruining your eardrums with random sound effects and blinding your screen with text messages. So just try to see what's happening with all of these messages. I managed to get Betsy's wings, which are an amazing set of wings. Just because I had an insane amount of tombstones in my area that I didn't clean up, I crafted an item called the Grave Buster and used it on my arena. Basically, it destroys all of the gravestones in a large area, so that's pretty nice. I then killed Betsy again so I could get the Flying Dragon, and I wanted to use that as my weapon of choice against Duke Fishron, but then I saw that the Ranger weapon, the Dragon's Breath, was actually better in my opinion, so I used that instead. And yeah, I got absolutely melted by this boss. 
So instead, I went to the dungeon entrance, summoned the cultist, and died on purpose, so I could get the zealot's possession, which summons the cultist anywhere. So after a few deaths that make me want to break my keyboard, I went back to fighting Fisheron. And after a few tries, I finally beat it. The Duke is not only faster, but it also shoots these razor blade typhoons all around the area, and phase 3 is also much different with the dashes being way faster. Luckily I managed to get the fish on wings first try, somehow, so that's convenient. But I also got a mutant credit card, which reduces the mutant's shop price by 30%. After I reforged my fish on wings, I tried some more goes at the cultist, and at one point, I beat it. The mascus mode cultist now makes an arena, and in the ritual attack, the cultists spin way faster around you, and the cultist clones never disappear. I managed to get a new permanent buff called the Mutant's Pack from the Lunatic Cultist, and it gives me an additional accessory slot, so now I have 8. I was looking at armor sets and the Gaia armor caught my eye, a new armor set added by Maskus Mode. So after grinding the Pumpkin Moon for Spooky Wood, since that was in the recipe, I crafted the Gaia armor. After that, I tried some fights with the Maskus Empress of Light, but I kept dying. So I destroyed the solar and vortex pillars. I used the solar fragments I got from the solar pillar to craft the daybreak. And instead, I used the daybreak with the usual melee enchantments like tungsten and such to make it overpowered. So I finally beat the Empress. This boss on attorney mode was actually really difficult for me, but on maskist mode, it was on another level. If I wasn't able to shred this boss, it would have been a much bigger problem. Well, at this point, it's not really different from any of the other bosses in maskist mode, since I'm just trying to find ways to shred them. After I killed the Empress, since I didn't get the Starlight from the treasure bag, I purchased another one from the Operator Quality of Life NPC and I got the Starlight. This weapon can apparently do amazing against Moonlord, so then I destroyed the Nebula and Stardust Pillar. Then Moonlord spawned. And at first, when I died, I didn't think it was that bad, but oh no, I was very wrong for the amount of pain this boss would cause me. So then I kept trying, and well... So yeah, this boss made me want to actually quit YouTube, though after about 150 attempts, I was starting to get agonizingly close to beating it. But then at one point, I started streaming my tries on YouTube. Problem is, you guys won't be able to hear any of the sounds of me and the game because I had some problems with the sound post editing. So there's that. But while I was streaming, this happened.
Yep, I beat it on stream, but no reaction, sorry. So after I beat Moonlord, I got access to many things, like new weapons, accessories, and stuff. But to craft all of those things, I needed a crafting station called the Crucible of the Cosmos. The ultimate crafting station that combines basically every station. But here's the thing, I needed a demon altar to make it. And remember the fact that I destroyed every demon altar? Yeah. So I did a little funny and went to my infernum world and made the crucible of the cosmos there. So now we made the crucible of the cosmos, but what can we make with it? We can make these cool weapons called energizer weapons. Energizer weapons are made by killing 100 of a certain boss at once. So for example, if you kill 100 skeletrons, you get the bony energizer which can be used to make the hell zone. We also only have access to pre hard mode energizers until we kill the abomination, a later boss. It's a bit confusing but you'll get it later on. So I made the queen bee swarm summon item and used it to summon 100 queen bees and I got the big sting since it looked like it was the best one. After doing that, I made a cool new accessory called the Heart of the Master. It basically combines a lot of the hard mode accessories you get from bosses, like the Precision Seal from the Empress, the Galactic Globe from Moonlord, all of that, and it gives me a lot of good buffs. I also grinded for the upgrade of the Sharpshooter's Essence called the Sniper's Soul. There are four class souls, the Berserker's Soul for Melee, the Sniper's Soul for Ranger, the Archwizard's Soul for Mage, and the Conjurist's Soul for Summoner. And I made the Sniper's Soul since the Big Sting is ranged. Then I made another soul called the Flight Mastery Soul, which combined a lot of wings, and it gave me infinite flight time and it made me fast while I was flying. And then I made the Colossus Soul, which combines a bunch of tank accessories to give me a lot of defense and damage reduction. And then I made the Supersonic Soul, which made me fast as hell. Alright, I'm done. You guys happy now? Actually no, I'm not done, because I decided to make two new enchantments, the Nebula Enchantment and the Stardust Enchantment. The nebula enchantment makes it so that when I hit someone, these nebula particles spawn, and when I collect them, they give me buffs. And the stardust enchantment, oh boy, it makes me be able to stop time, let's go. So then I decided to start fighting the champions. The champions are basically a series of post moonlord bosses that Maskist mode adds. There's the champion of timber, terra, earth, nature, life, shadow, spirit, and will. The final champion is Eridanus, champion of the cosmos, which is the only mandatory one. But the champions before Eridanus still drop some cool stuff, because they drop enchantments. So now you don't need to craft them anymore. The first champion on the checklist was the champion of timber, so I decided to kill it first. I summoned it by crafting the sigil of champions and used it in the forest. And not gonna lie, this was the first time I actually tested out the time stop for the stardust enchantment on a boss's playthrough. And my god, I love it! So that's our first champion down, 8 more to go. So the next champion I fought was the underground champion, the champion of Terra. So I used the sigil of champions in the underground and summoned it. Then I fought the champion of earth, the champion fought in the underworld. After doing that, I decided to get another swarm weapon called the Hell Zone. It required me to defeat 100 Skeletrons to craft it. And I used it against the next champion, fought in the underground ice biome, the Champion of Nature.
Then I fought the champion of life, the champion fought in the hallowed. Then the champion of shadow, the champion fought in the corruption. And then the champion of spirits, the champion fought in the underground desert. And lastly, the champion of will fought in the ocean biome. Okay, I'm done. Well, I'm at least done with the optional champions. The last champion, Eridanus, is the only mandatory one, and it's the final champion. But before doing so, I first grinded the champion of Earth for more enchantments to make the force of Earth. Forces are basically combinations of enchantments, and it's honestly really good. I also grinded the champion of Terra for the force of Terra, another really good force. Now that I got the two best forces for my loadout, I tried a fight with Eridanus, and I surprisingly did pretty well for a first try. And then on my second try, I beat it! This boss can do a lot of cool things, and it's probably my favorite boss from this mod. It's not too difficult, but it needs skill, it's a fun fast paced fight, but it's mostly my favorite because it can stop time. That's so cool. I got two items from this boss, I got Iridanium, a material used to make the Iridanus armor set, and the Force of Cosmos, an amazing force we'll get into later. And I got the Universe Core, which made crits deal 4 times instead of 2 times damage. And this thing is amazing. I then crafted the Force of the Cosmos, probably the best force, used from enchantments dropped by Iridanus. So now, we are ready for the next real boss, the Abomination. So I crafted the Abomination's Curse, and once again I streamed, this time my fight with Abomination. But this time I don't have to mute the sounds. Here's a compilation of fun clips, I guess. Yeah, we, need a, we need a flying mount that is the same speed as any other flying mount to keep it balanced. And what it is, yeah. is just Skeletron's head that spins around in circles as you fly. True. We'll make it turns you into a am I Am I no-hitting? I haven't taken a single hit yet. 
You're gonna get hit by the arena. I swear to God, if you hit the arena again. I just hit it right as you said it. Dude, oh, oh my god. My. Eventually, while Cataclysmic Armageddon and Cold Colossal were just jabbering on, I actually got a lucky attempt. And this happened. Alright guys, shut up, I'm getting close again. Um, you have That's 200 the, health. You know, if, if anyone was just out of the room and just heard Skeletron shout, Guys, shut up, I'm close! You have to question what the hell's going on. Oh and my god. Skeletron out of context. Someone make a Skeletron out of context compilation. Oh no. Oh my god, guys, shut up, I'm getting close! <laughs> Skeletron! Oh my god. Don't get hit by the arena. No, you fool. He got beaten. The, he got the crap beaten out of him by that arena. Okay, okay, okay. Desperation phase. <laughs> get away from the Sky Island. It's still delayed. Oh, you got the... I'm going to hear please, you say, please, oh, please. man. Okay. Come on, say he's going to die. Jinx it, jinx it. Die, he's going to live. Die, you're going to die. die. You're going to die. Skeletron's going to live. He's going to do it. He will do it. Please, he has please, the please. power of all of us holding him. Lose, 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 lose. Win, win, Shut up. win, Shut win. Up. Right. Dodge. Careful, careful, careful. I'm um, actually. He's going to do it again. What is going on right now? Oh god. Is it? Is this yeah, it? It's got, it it's it's really Wait, I think I beat it. I think I beat it. Let's no, go. I think he has a big he has a big laser beam. We did it. You beat it? No, I, I beat think, it. I don't think no. we did. Let's go! Once you beat the Abomination, it drops this crafting material called Abominable Energy, and it's used to craft a ton of stuff. Before grinding for the accessories, I grinded for a new weapon. Now that we beat the Abomination, the energizers for the hard mode bosses are able to be used. I decided to go for the twins weapon, the Gemini Glaives, so I grinded 100 twins, and for some reason I didn't get the energizer. So I just teleported it into the game because I'm just that good. I'm not cheating, I swear. And I used the energizer to craft the Gemini Glaives. It basically gives you two attacks. Left clicking will shoot them out, and right clicking will also shoot them out but it shoots lasers as well. If you rotate between them, you will deal more damage since it will spawn more projectiles. Now for the accessories. So I then took another 4 hours to grind for 4 specific souls. First, the soul of the master, which combined a bunch of certain accessories like the bionomic cluster, dubious circuitry, and more to make an abomination of an accessory. Second, I crafted the soul of Terraria. I had to grind for every enchantment and force in the game, so I had to grind every champion, and this accessory combines every enchantment and force in the game, and it's absolutely insane. Next, I crafted the soul of the universe, which combines the four class souls. 
I had to grind for a ton of class weapons so it was painful to get. And lastly, there was the Soul of Dimensions, which combines certain other souls like the Colossus Soul, the Flight Mastery Soul, etc. Not to mention some of the non-soul items I got. I started using an accessory called the Abominable Wand, which gave me a revive, and it was dropped by the Abomination. And I also used the Abominable Energy to craft Sticks Armor, an armor set that gives me good damage, and it also gave me these energy projectiles around my player that stack whenever I don't get hit. I can double tap down to release them dealing damage to the enemy. And now, we are ready. It's time for the mutant. And you know, I thought this was gonna be a hard boss fight, but I didn't know the amount of horror, suffering, and mental pain this boss would give me. I summoned it for the first time and I died instantly. After a few more test tries, I decided to go for a different weapon, the Nano Core. And for some reason, in its crafting recipe, it needed 99 Martian Saucer trophies. Why? I don't know but there was a Martian Saucer summon item sold by the Abomination, so that saved me a lot of time. So after killing a hellish amount of Martian Saucers, I managed to craft the Nano Core. And it has four modes, the Melee Mode, the Ranged Mode, the Mage Mode, and the Summoner Mode. I decided to go with the Melee Mode because it seemed like it dealt the most damage, so I decided to try some more against the Mutant. And here's a compilation, to say the least. Yeah, I died a lot. And honestly, I was thinking about giving up and scrapping this video as a whole. I was taking hundreds of attempts and hours upon hours of just fighting this boss. If you were up to date with my community posts, you would know how much pain I was going through. But you guys, you guys still supported me. You guys gave me motivation and I kept going. If you guys didn't know, the mutant has a desperation phase. And you know how it has a laser in eternity mode in that desperation phase? In masochist mode, it has two and they both one-shot you. Not only that, but the eyes that come in the desperation phase, if you hit them, the mutant time stops, letting the laser hit you, one-shotting you as well. So I have to no-hit the laser attack in the desperation phase. But I had a solution to this. I decided to go in a different world with a different character and kept insta-killing the boss so I can practice the desperation phase this boss had. After practicing a bit, I knew I could beat it. So I went back to my main world, and in one attempt, I got embarrassingly close to beating the mutant. And then, the next attempt, I won't explain the fight like the last ones. I'll just let you watch.
I was finally done. After 353 attempts, I was done. There's only one thing left to do now. I got this material called Eternal Energy from the Mutant, which was used for crafting the Soul of Eternity. But I didn't get enough Eternal Energy. I didn't want to fight it again, so I tried buying a Mutant Treasure Bag from one of the Quality of Life NPCs. But for some reason, the NPC was bugged. And it wasn't selling the treasure bag. So I just cheated some of the eternal energy. Alright, look. I would have bought the eternal energy. There's no difference. I don't want to fight the mutant ever again. So now I had enough eternal energy to craft it. Well, I'm finally done for this video. This was by far the hardest playthrough I have ever done. Do I recommend this mod? Hell no. Don't do it. Don't even consider it. Calamity Infernum is a cakewalk compared to this level of difficulty. I want to hit my goal of 20,000 subs, so subscribing would be appreciated. Also, if you want to stay up to date and ask me any questions, join my Discord. I'm going to be taking a one week break from Terraria because my mental fortitude is completely gone because of Mascus Mutant. Thanks for watching and see ya.